The video I wanted to play for you was uh, from the IUIC leader, Bishop Nathaniel, when they when they uh, surrounded Geno Jennings Church. And we ain't, we don't want to debate the blood. We want to debate who we are as a race. Stop the BS. That's what we said. Stop the BS. Got to stop. We the Israelites. The Bible speaks. He said we don't want to debate the blood of Christ. We want to debate who we are as a people. This is what this person said. This is what this false prophet said, who's leading hundreds upon thousands of people to hell. This is what this false teacher, Bishop Nathaniel said. He said, we don't want to debate the blood of Christ. In other words, I don't want to talk about the thing that will redeem my people, the thing that God sent to forgive my people, the thing that will bring my people out of sin bring them from darkness to light we don't want to talk about that we want to focus on us we don't want to focus on the bloodshed work of jesus christ we don't want to focus on the gospel this fella said we don't want to debate about the shed blood of jesus christ it's not about salvation for him it's about who he is who we are as a people this man have deceived hundreds upon thousands of y'all and we ain't, we don't want to debate the blood we want to debate who we are as a race and if the shoe fit put it on if not it's not for you but he has deceived thousands of people and too many folk are not are, are not standing up against this nonsense and any of y'all compromisers out there talk about i understand how you are see they doing a good thing you're a hypocrite you probably don't know the Lord either because you don't understand that these men are preaching a heretical doctrine. Repent and let's all trust in Jesus the Christ for salvation. Talking about he don't want to talk about the blood of Christ. He want to talk about who he is. Brother, who you are. Then he had the nerve to say that uh, his voice as of many waters. Like he was Jesus Christ. He said he had a voice like many waters. This man has become an idol to all them purple shirt wearing brothers. Listen, y'all need to repent. Every IUIC member, you need to repent. Your God is Nathaniel. You need to trust in Jesus Christ. This man is leading you to hell. You need to repent. Come out of that sea. And we, we don't want to debate the blood. We want to debate who we are as a race. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, fellow believers of this faith, you supporters of this truth, even you few sisters, and shalom to the elect. So I saw this video here with Elder Mike. I was actually going to do a video, okay, on this Christian, and I have to give him some form of credit. He does, when you look at his channel, he he believes sincerely what he teaches. I mean, he believes it. Don't make it right. But he's like one of the few. There's some others, but he's one of the few Christians that are considered real defenders of the Christian gospel. And they'll get on other churches. You don't normally see too many people of that denomination of the Vocabionites who are really going out to defend against the doctrine against other Christians. Some make it, you know, some make it their business or like a profession to come after the Hebrew Israelites. Although there's just multiple doctrines out there, according to the Bible that are clearly destructive. And this guy, um, pastor Mike, I believe his name is, is in defense. And he really believes what he believes. If he ever converted to the truth, he would probably be a good defender of the gospel, of the Bible, right? The whole book. But, okay, what I want to go into is Bishop Nathaniel correct or is the IUIC correct? I mean, is IUIC correct, the bishop, or this man, Elder Mike, or the, the, the apologist? Well, I'll give my take on it. Number one, they're both wrong, but... Elder Mike, this Christian, does have a point how Bishop Nathaniel exalts himself like he is the most high. Now, in credit to Bishop Nathaniel when he said, well, I don't want to debate 
the blood of the cross. He was just kind of going in on that's the thing that they want to continue, you know, that Christians tend to touch on a lot, the blood of the cross. I don't think he sincerely meant that. That's my personal opinion. We, we cannot like a group, but we'll tell them they're going off or we'll have the mercy in, in teaching these lessons to say, okay, he didn't mean that. What Bishop Nathaniel was saying is, I don't want to go uh, with all the, you know, crazy uh, Christian talk about the blood of Jesus loving everybody. But what's also kind of confusing is this group teaches Jesus. So to me, it's like one Christian church against another. It's just the other knows a little more about their heritage and their history. And the Christian church, whose forefathers is Martin Luther, John Calvin, St. Francis, and various others, that's their, you know, the Jesuits, that Christianity they teach is what we know of today. The hell doctrine, the virgin birth, which came from Pope Pius, which brought it back from the Greeks and the Romans and the Babylonians and so forth. So anyway, let's get some scriptures because there was something that he said that they both are doing wrong, but um, Bishop Nathaniel should know better. This is why I don't give him any kind of credit because he should know better. And it ain't about me. It's just about what's truth and what's, what's not true. Now this uh, Elder Mike said, they're leading thousands of people to hell. Well, let's go to Joel 2 and 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Neither one of them are calling on the actual name of the Lord. They agree there. They agree it doesn't matter what um, name you call them, but the bishop believes, I see, believes it doesn't matter what name you call him, but it does matter what he looked like. So that's kind of confusing. The picture and the name should kind of go together. But that's what they teach. For Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord have said, and uh, in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, the IUIC doesn't push the remnant like Great Millstone, like we do, the elect. This is why they're at the church. But Elder Mike, they just believe you already saved, which I don't know how that's possible, because if somebody's already saved and then they turn to a murderer, according to their doctrine, then they're no longer saved. So you don't have the right to determine if you're saved or not. Uh, John 15 says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Okay, so that's another issue, which Nate knows some things. Well, he actually knows. Bishop Nathaniel, if he ever got in his right mind when it comes to the doctrine, you know, they wouldn't be having that kind of conversation. But Nate is very subtile. So what he does, he's kind of linked his doctrine to a Christian-based standard. And what happens is, outside of the Hebrew Israelites, people are going to kind of look towards the group that has the most Christian outlook, so to speak. So the one wife thing, <clears throat> which we debunk that if you go into the letters of Paul and have understand on that I'm not going to get into that the hell doctrine well that word hell you know goes back to Gehenna was a place in Jerusalem or on the outskirts of Jerusalem where they burnt the filth right which was a good place at one time but they um, they called it hell because hell just means grave so when you see hell fire that means grave fire like if there's a plague and they're going to burn a lot of bodies, they'll turn, they'll throw them in hell, right? And the other one is the underworld, right, of how they teach um, Hades and the underworld or the mytholo mythological, you know, practices. But when you die and you go under the ground, your body is in the underworld. World has many different definitions, so that's another world. But anyway, neither here or there. They both kind of teach similar doctrines, which makes it both destruction, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. So here's a scripture that both of them, uh, which Bishop Nathaniel knows, um, Jeremiah 10 and 23. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Oh, Lord, correct me. 
but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest I bring me, me to nothing. Right? Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not, upon the families that call not on my name. There we go again. For they have eaten up Jacob, right, with their theatrics, right, and devoured him. Remember that Jeremiah 5 say they lay wait and catch men and consume him and have not made his habitation desolate. So you hear, see here that Bishop Nathaniel, he has created his own doctrine. Elder, the elder of the Christian faith, he's only following a doctrine that was set up, bestowed upon him during the 1500s, right? Uh, uh, 16, 17, let me say this, 17, 1800s as that gr doctrine grew. So, um, we see here that man's, uh, man does not direct his own steps, though the whole point of this is there's no reason for us to go stand in front of a church and try to wake up black people. As Elder Mike, I think that's his name, there's no reason to say you're sending thousands of people to hell because none of us can send anybody to hell, even in your terminology of thinking. Only the Lord can send anyone to hell. But we know you Christians, you listen to our videos, but you take everything, but the salvation for all, you hold on to that. Even other Hebrew Israelite groups do that as well. So we'll go to Proverbs 20. Well, first let's go to Acts 6 and 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So that's what we're doing. Um, IUIC teaches all about the law. We don't teach that, right? We do teach the law, but we teach through faith because we were following the law. Right? And what happened to us? We unjustly followed it. That's why he sent his son to bring us back through faith and belief. We really got away from the faith in the Lord. So Yahweh Shah, he we we bridged through him to bring us back through faith and an obedience of the law, right? To the best of our ability. So this is what it's all about. Waking up the elect, not flying to Africa not going in the sepulchre of a church that looks like a tomb that dead bodies roll in and dead bodies roll out. The dead bodies sitting in caskets and the dead bodies sitting in the pews because all of them are like dead. But that's the Christian church. But again, I'll say Pastor Mike, he is really fighting for his belief. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. So we can see that no matter what you try to do, no matter what churches you stand in front of. And then you could say that with the pastor and hooks up with vocab and they went out to other Israelite groups. Let's see what the Bible say. So now really, the one should be debating really or having conversation of fighting for the faith is ones that's in the faith to be honest and ones that's willing to learn as uh, uh was that first peter 3 and 15 always be, be ready to give an answer for every man that has asked you for a reason of hope of the calling that's where the, the, the fight should come if we go stand in front of a christian church or in front of a bunch of christians or they come stand in front of us What's going to happen? Cast not thou pearls before swine, lest they trample thee. You throw pearls in a, a, a den of swine, they're going to trample it, and it's going to come back and kick you in the face, man, hit you in the face. It doesn't work. You got to trust in the Lord. Apollos, Apollos have watered, but Yahweh have given the increase. Seems like these Israelite camps, they don't trust in the Lord. It's almost like they use gimmicks. Marches, colors, right? Some some type of subtile guile to manipulate and catch men. When really, 
All you need is the faith and the trust in the Heavenly Father. But they're not into faith. It's almost as Christians, this Christian here believes more in faith than uh, the IUIC. Although the Christian is off too. Anyway, beloved, when I gave the uh, gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that's what we're doing now. This is why we do these videos. A lot of Christians come on the uh, comment board. They got a lot of weird stuff to say. And they'll just come on and say, bless Jesus. Bless Jesus. That's fine. We're not talking to you. The, the blood of Jesus was only for the Israelites. Let's get that real quick. Just in part of this lesson, I'll get a scripture first lesson that come to mind. I'm at first scripture. Uh, what is that, John? Let's go to John 11. It says, um, John 11:49. I'm gonna just get to the point. Um, uh, 48. If we let thus alone, this was the Pharisees, the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they counseled about what would they do. Um, that you know against Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus, that do miracles. He said, if we let thus alone, all men will believe on him, right? And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation, right? So this wouldn't, this wasn't good behavior to the to the Pharisees. The Pharisees wanted to see, you know, a prosperous work and make money according to the, their doctrine, and just be left alone. But Yahweh Shah came and had an issue with that, and it seems like. You know, this guy, IUIC, the bishop, he's like one of those Pharisees, you know. I mean, you read Matthew 23, ah, that goes all day. You know, do as they say, but don't do as they do. Um, they make broaden their phylacteries, which literally they actually broaden their phylacteries. Anyway, and one of them named Caiaphas, being high priest that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. So we see here, when you read up, he was taught the chief priests and the Pharisees was gathered together, right? Um, you know nothing at all, nor consider that expedient for us that one man should die for the people and, and the whole nation perish not, right? The nation, this is what it says. And this spake, he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahweh says Jesus should die for that nation. Right? That nation. And not that nation only, because you had many Israelites scattered amongst nation. And really it's the nations of Israelites, because nation just means people. <laughs> right? And not that not that nation only, but that also he should gather together. And one of the children of God that was scattered abroad. This is James 1 and 1. To the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. This is in Ezekiel. This is in Deuteronomy 28, 64. Right? So I just wanted to bring that out. So we go to um, Matthew uh, 15 and 4. Let them alone, you blind, the blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall into the ditch. <laughs> right? So really, Christians that roll up on us, they should be like, well, we rolled up on them, let the blind leave them, alone, leave them alone. And Israelites should be rolling up on Christians, shouldn't be rolling up on Christians at this point. Uh, we tried to convert you, you didn't get it. Okay, we're going to leave you alone. This is what the scripture says. So it seems like a lot of this is a lot of shaking and moving and hustling and being uh, part of the spot spotlight for a couple of, you know, extra clout, extra business, it's money involved, I'm pretty sure. We've seen a lot with this group. And um, what can we say about Christianity? It's all white supremacy to a degree. They never changed the image of Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus, by the way. They kept that white Cedra Borgias up. It wasn't until we came on the scene and said, this is wrong. Then they say the color don't matter. 
when I was a little child in school and church and going to summer school, church school, Sunday school, nobody told me color didn't matter. In fact, they had me paint a white Jesus, but that was all good. Yeah, right. So my take on it is they're both wrong, but the IUIC ought to be more of ashamed of themselves for knowing the truth and turning their back on the Lord. Joel 2 and 32, I believe, as I read, say he who calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. They're not about calling on the name of the Lord. They're still in a higher form of Christianity. That's all I have on that, Shalom.